AMD is gonna give us the goods. One of the best monitors ever made, in my opinion, is finally getting made, and the James Webb Space Telescope's getting delayed again. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. So let's start off this hot news talking about the fact that AMD CTO, Mark Papermaster, introducing some details that they're gonna give us on January 4th, all right? This is kind of like when the No Way Home spoilers were dropping all over the internet and you were like, I know who's gonna be in the movie. And then the movie is like, do you now? Okay, well, yeah, some of them are gonna be in the movie. And you're like, okay, cool. I'm gonna go see the movie. And then everybody went and saw the movie. But yes, Mark Papermaster confirming that at CES on January 4th during their keynote, we will get details of not only the stuff that we're expecting to launch immediately, like the Zen 3D stuff, but Zen 4 is gonna get some mention at CES with the things that are gonna happen in 2022. So hopefully, at least according to how we kinda know it from behind the scenes, Ryzen 6000 should be safe for anything that's Zen 3 plus the 3 3D caching technology that allows it to be much better at gaming without a change in architecture. Zen 4 will then be called Ryzen 7000, at least generally speaking from how we understand it. And a lot of it does seem to indicate that everything from Ryzen 7000 onwards is always gonna have a graphics chip baked into it. The APU is always gonna be there. That's at least just the general idea that's going on. Obviously, we're most looking forward to the 3D cache chips because those will be coming out hopefully in January or February. They'll still be DDR4, PCI Express 4.0, but then Zen 4 will transition to DDR5, PCI Express 5.0, and all of that goodness. Mark Papermaster also saying that we expect our customers to have a high bar of expectation for AMD's next launch, and we're working hard to meet that with Zen 4. This is good news if you're a fan of AMD because they have done a really good job of meeting their IPC improvements and just the performance claims that they've been saying they're gonna make generation on generation when they talk about their roadmaps to see that they're still saying, yes, we are on task, we're on target. We're gonna hit all of the production and the performance benchmarks that we're setting for ourselves as we move forward. I think that does bode well for Zen 4, but let me know what are you most excited for coming out of CES? Obviously we have Intel launching their stuff. Nvidia also has a keynote and AMD also has a keynote. I think they're like one hour after another. AMD is supposed to be at 10 a.m. Eastern. I think Intel's at 9 a.m. and then Nvidia's at 11 a.m. I'm not 100% sure, but they're very back to back to back on January 4, so it's just gonna be a splew of good news all over your tech feed. What do you want out of CES besides stock and affordable pricing? Let me know down below in the comments. And I'm gonna let you, and it looks like from CES, we're not gonna get a whole lot extra there because a lot of companies appear to be dropping out. The biggest ones that are now announcing their dropouts out of CES 2022, Amazon, Meta, Twitter, T-Mobile, all announcing that they're gonna go virtual as opposed to attending the in-person event, which is due to the just changing in the entire COVID-19 scene that's going on right now. Last year, in case you don't remember, CES was completely virtual. They're opening it back up this year. Proof of vaccination is required. And we'll see what happens. I think we're too close to the event for things to get fully canceled at this point, but I wouldn't be surprised that more and more companies might be pulling the rug from their CES plans. But one of the CES plans I'm very excited about is the unveiling of new storage technology, ADATA announcing that they're gonna have some PCI Express 5.0 drives to show off, 14 gigabytes per second of sequential read speeds under the XPG gaming brand coming January 5th that they're gonna show up in capacities of up to eight terabytes. My goodness, yes, more of this. ADATA Project Nighthawk and ADATA Project Blackbird. If all of my videos with the PS5 on the RAID card and the RAID cards that I've been putting into my PCs isn't enough evidence, I like fast storage and I don't use it, I don't need it, but I love it. Give me more of it, and I wanna give you more of the hottest tech deals that are out on the internet. Obviously, we have the UFD deal site, which we recently launched, but in case you wanna get the latest deals as they're happening, you can go ahead and join our Discord server because it's automatically set up that as a deal is posted to the UFD deals website, it gets posted to the tech deals channel on Discord, so you can be one of the first to slop it up. But let's talk about some of the hottest tech deals that are out on the internet right now. HP has their 16.1-inch Victus gaming laptop with the Core i5 processor, eight gigs of RAM, button 
an NVIDIA RTX 3050. It's only going for $650 right now, which is actually a pretty good deal on a medium level gaming laptop. In case you're looking for a budget case for your next PC build, Antec has this Dark Phantom DP501, which is currently going for $30 after a $25 rebate, but also includes free shipping from Newegg, which is usually the killer when it comes to case deals. This thing's gonna cost you 30 bucks. In case you're looking for a decent 60% mechanical keyboard, this EUSU with red switches and RGB backlit and all of that is $33.99 right now with an extra 20% savings. I think that puts it in the $27.92 mark, which based on the reviews that I'm seeing for 28 bucks, it's a pretty decent deal. And is there a decent deal on the crypto stonks? Let's find out how the crypto market's doing right now. Bitcoin just kind of flat 0.6% on the day, sitting below 49,000. Not a whole lot of movement there. Ethereum roughly in the same place, kind of down, still below 4,000, creep back up over 4,000 in the middle of the day, but it's sitting pretty flat as well. Dogecoin up roughly 3% to sit at 17.5%. And meme stonks not faring as well. GameStop down 2.5% on the day to sit at 154.18. And AMC cratering a little bit down 5.6% to remove a lot of the rally that I had earlier this week now at 28. But don't you worry your gamer hands about it, all right? If they're starting to cramp Mrs. Puff because you got some anxiety over the meme stunks and how they're performing, well, you got a new hand massager for gamers that's coming out in Japan. The MSG01HBK is gonna be able to massage all your fingers to make it so that you feel good and you're able to play the game as long as you want, all right, my friend? You wanna read your favorite manga, you wanna store your monster in this canister thing right here, and then you wanna stick your hands in this contraption that's just gonna softly massage every little nook crevice of your fingers. Well, it's gonna set you back $145, but it does have 15 different massage zones, 10 minute automatic timer, and it's only available in Japan at this point. But it does also have a heating mode, which can help to massage those extra phalanges that you got going on that have been stressed beyond measure as you're trying to do the next raid in Final Fantasy 14 Endwalker, whatever the heck it's called, all right? And I want you to know that Game Pass is called good value, at least according to reports where people are tallying up the total value that Game Pass is provided to gamers here in 2021. And according to the estimation, if you had Xbox's Game Pass during this year, you got $6,300 worth of games over the course of the year for either the normal subscription, which is $10 a month, so for $120, or if you pay for it on PC like I do, then it's $15 a month, so $180. You could have access to a whole library of games. For me personally, it's been a great deal because as soon as Halo Infinite drops, Forza Horizon 5, Age of Empires 4, Psycho knots to it and whenever any of those dropped I was able to have them day one and then I can still play through the back catalog of Ori and the Will of the Wisp as well as getting access to things like Final Fantasy VIII Remastered. It's a pretty good deal and obviously it likely will only get better as Microsoft continues to add Bethesda titles onto it such as the upcoming Starfield. Star Fox? Star Flyer. I can't remember exactly what the next anticipated title is, but I'll remember the next time I have to talk about it, which now I want to talk about the best gosh dang monitor I ever saw that I want right now, and that's LG's Dual Up monitor, which takes the trend of going super ultra wide. We have those 32 by 9, 5120 by 1440 resolution monitors that go super far out and makes it so that you need tons of desk space to get it done. No, LG's going the opposite way in a brilliant stroke of brilliance because it's actually a vertical monitor that's essentially two 1440p monitors stacked vertically. So instead of doing 5120 by 1440, it's 2560, which is the length, by 2880. So you still get two 1440p monitors, but in a kind of better footprint because it goes up rather than sideways. And I think I usually have more vertical space than I do horizontal space on my desk. Anyway, 16 by 18 aspect ratio. Likely not going to be for gaming. Probably only going to be 60 hertz. It only has 300 nits. It only has a thousand to one contrast ratio, so it's not perfect, but I think I enjoy this a lot better than the super ultra-wide craze, and I would love to see more companies implement this as far as a productivity type monitor, content creation type monitor. I think up and down might be slightly better than left to right, at least for me, but let me know your opinion on this down below in the comments. Now I'm going to let you know my disappointment that the James Webb Space Telescope has been delayed again 
But thankfully, it's only due to bad weather on the anticipated launch date of this coming Friday, December 24th, and it's been delayed only one day to December 25th. So yes, a Christmas launch of the most hotly anticipated scientific exploration launch thing that's happening in the last dec few decades is gonna be happening between 7.20 a.m. and 7.52 a.m. Eastern time, provided that all of the weather stays the same and things actually look favorable for a launch. But it's not like the telescope broke or anything bad happened. It's just weather, which is something that changes. We can wait on the weather. And can you wait for the day that mobile phone companies stop using the word unlimited? I personally just, I'm so frustrated by it, especially as I did my Cannonball for the Cure charity stream where I had to look through all of the different mobile data plans that are available out on the World Wide Web. None of them are freaking unlimited, except for a few. I found a few that are meant to be like RV solutions. And even then they were limited to 500 gigabytes. So not truly unlimited. Anyways, Mint Mobile getting into some controversy over their unlimited plans from the National Advertising Review Board, because despite the fact that you think of unlimited having caps is somehow the problem here, it's not. Every freaking carrier in the entire gosh dang country does it, all right? You, you want unlimited data? Okay, it's 20 gigs. And then you get throttled down. The issue here is that Mint Mobile, instead of throttling their customers down to 3G data, allegedly are throttling down their customers to 2G data, and that's too slow for it to be unlimited because that's then you just get no data after that. It's not unlimited. It's capped to like 76 gigabytes per month, which is just, that's the frustrating thing to me. It's not unlimited. If I can calculate, okay, if I use the max bandwidth of 5G or 4G and I do it as fast as I can, and then I calculate the rest of the month for how long, how low you throttle me to, then I can calculate the maximum amount of data that I could possibly use. Therefore, it is not unlimited. It's actually really limited and it's really constrained by time and you don't actually disclose any of it properly and I wish they would just get rid of it, but this is Brett's rant of the day being completely finished right there. And I'm gonna be finished with this whole episode ending on that rant. I'll be looking forward to seeing you tomorrow for breakfast, my friends, as we embark on another episode of Hot News this holiday season. Jingle jangle. <laughs>